Hello and welcome everyone to the September community meeting of the I2B2 Transmart Foundation. Uh, my name is Rudy Ponzo and I'll be the host today. Our agenda is here and we'll go through these topics. Um, have a conclude with a presentation by Kendra Elliston uh, from the Axiomedics company. So let me uh, turn, uh, uh, this uh, is being recorded and the recording will be available on the foundation's YouTube channel, as well as on our website and also with the slide deck. So with that, let me turn it over to our managing director, Diane Kia. Hi everyone, and thanks for joining. Um, I'm happy that to see um, everybody, uh, happy September. I don't know what happened to the year, but summer is um, almost over. Um, I want to kick this off and I want to give you a, a quick update on our membership program. Um, so I think I think most people know that we have a membership program um, and we had the, the annual election, um, at least those of you who are members, um, over the past few weeks. Um, there were 14 nominations, um, I think from like 12, 11 or 12 different organizations, um, which was wonderful. Um, so the election was held um, September 6th through the 16th, and um, now we have 110 um, new members. So let me show you and announce the new members. So, um, so here are the people. Um, we haven't actually notified, hopefully some of you are actually on the phone right now. We haven't actually notified these people yet. I'm gonna send emails out um, today. Um, a number of these people are, are people that I work closely with. Um, a number of um, new people um, from the European market. We have uh, people from some um, academic medical centers and, and vendors. So really, really thrilled to have um, new people join the, um, the membership uh, program. Next slide, Rudy. So the, the membership program has um, has done a couple of things. One, it, you know, it, it does nominate um, the uh, members of the um, board of directors, which is which is one thing. Um, but it also has um, got together to create working groups, and these working groups have been um, pretty successful. Um, ETL ontologies user interfaces and um, use cases are, are something that that's a new group that's just getting um, getting off the ground. But um, you don't have to be a member to be part of the working group. It's really open to everyone. We have uh, 140 individuals from across the community who have joined these working groups. Um, and it continues to grow. When we talk about them at our um, annual conferences, you know, people are excited about the work that we're doing and um, that tends to um, recruit new people. So uh, next slide, Rudy. Okay, so the, the thing I wanted to mention, and I've mentioned this on these calls a couple of times, is really taking another look at that membership um, committee and um, trying to, to put some structure around it. And to do that, we're going to really need a, a couple, you know, one or two people to, to step up and take, uh, take on a leadership uh, role. So I would love very much to recruit, you know, one or two uh, chairs um, to expand the support. Um, I'd like to the idea would be that we have a couple of member meetings per year. Um, if people could, uh, we could find a place where people could show up in person, that would be wonderful, but certainly um, we can do uh, remote meetings as well. Um, that's what we did, and that was, and that's how the working groups got um, kicked off. So if we, you know, put some structure around that, I think we could really talk about um, how we could, we could uh, pull this together. They can pro participate in um, our, our um, PMCs, to, um, to really look at our, our platforms. Um, and, and the other thing that would be wonderful is if they could help us with the user group meetings. Um, these meetings are um, really great. We've got one coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, I think that, that people are excited about what, what we're talking about, but I think really understanding you know, what we should put in those meetings is something that I think that can be, I'd love to get more input from the community on. So if anybody is interested, um, even slightly interested and just wants to talk about it, please reach out to me. I think Rudy, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thanks, Dan. Uh, as I mentioned, we have our next um, meeting, user group meeting coming up. It's in uh, Tübingen, Germany, 
uh, on October 8th and 9th. Hopefully, if you're coming, you've already started to make your plans. Uh, the university is uh, an, an old and um, well-established uh, institution uh, in Germany. Um, and uh, some of the interesting things that have happened there are, are listed, or some of the people who have come from there uh, are listed there, including the discovery of DNA in 1868. Um, we've got a whole program uh, set up. Uh, we've got almost 70 people registered. Uh, we're expecting that uh, a lot of you may still be coming and uh, there's still certainly room uh, for you. Uh, I just would encourage you that uh, if you are interested in coming, uh, the hotel rooms are limited at this point. So you should book soon to make sure you hold a hotel room. Uh, also, uh, we do have a poster session that still has openings. And so if you would like to bring a poster, uh, it is uh, fairly wide open. And we would love to have you um, come and share your work uh, through a poster. Uh, the agenda itself is set. We've got uh, keynotes speaking on a number of uh, interesting topics, uh, we believe, uh, as you see here, um, including an update on the Odyssey and NOMOP work uh, that has been going on, and a keynote by Sean Murphy uh, talking about some uh, new interesting uh, uh, topics like automated phenotyping. Uh, there are a number of user stories and updates that will be presented, uh, as well as updates on our various platforms. And then on the, at the end of the second day, the session itself will end at, uh, I think it is two o'clock, uh, early enough if you're needing to get home uh, on, on, on the second day, you can do that. But then we will have some workshops that include uh, uh, not only some uh, in, uh, work on uh, uh, Glowing Bear, but also uh, I2B2 and Transmart will each have what we're calling drop-in sessions where you can come and bring uh, questions and ideas uh, to talk about uh, the different platforms. So trying something a little bit different this year and uh, we hopefully you'll uh, you'll want to come and uh, participate. So still plenty of room. Uh, we'd love to have you uh, come and join us. Um, the next topic I'm going to talk a little bit about beta testing. Uh, Transmart version 19 is now available for, for beta test. Uh, I will remind you that uh, I2B2 1.7.12 is also in beta test. We heard about that last month. Jeff Klan talked about it, uh, and there's information on the website uh, to get to uh, the information on I2B2 uh, version 12, which is coming shortly. Uh, Transmart version 19 is uh, a lot of architectural work uh, on the inside that uh, with a lot of cleanup, uh, a lot of work being done. Uh, Peter Rice is really uh, done the bulk of the integration, uh, but taking advantage of work from Paul VX Lab, uh, work that was done previously on Transmart Pro, uh, and a number of uh, additional uh, capabilities. Um, the information is uh, on the uh, on our wiki, uh, and the link is, is shown here, but also available on the website and on the wiki. Um, we don't uh, have a staff uh, at Trans as part of the foundation to, to work on Transmart. Transmart has really been a full open source uh, project, and so we rely on the community and the users to, uh, to test uh, the various pieces of the, the system. Uh, obviously, we do run through some uh, number of regression tests and things uh, to, to validate the system, but uh, anyone who has some time, uh, an hour here or there, uh, to test your, your favorite uh, options, uh, the, the system is up and running at this uh, location, uh, Postgres version, I think it is, and um, it, um, it has some data loaded. So we would uh, love to have you uh, just try it out and see if, uh, if you see anything, you know, that uh, could be an issue, especially if you're running uh, a 16.1 uh, or 16.2 or 16.3. Uh, this should all be very, you know, fairly familiar, but, um, you know, we'd love to just see uh, if you give it a quick uh, drive through. So that's available today, and uh, we will keep it. Uh, it'll continue for the next couple of weeks, uh, depending on what the feedback is. Um, we're hoping to get it released uh, in October. Thank you. That's what we need to talk about there. So now we're going to, to switch. We have a, a guest speaker uh, to talk about a TB data, tuberculosis data portal project uh, that's being run uh, with uh, Axiomatics and uh, open. Source Pharma Foundation. 
and I will introduce Kendra Elliston. I have to unmute her uh, to go through the slide deck. Kendra, are you there? Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes, sounds fine. Hi, thank you, Rudy. So I wanted to talk today about a project that some of you all may recall hearing a little bit about at the Harvard meeting this June. Um, this project uses Transmart, which is hence its relevance here. Um, the OSPF PI, Dr. Nabeta Tarath, will be presenting this project in detail in Tubingen, um, but I have a brief overview for you today. So my name is Kendra Elliston, and I'm the project manager from Axiomatics for this project. Next slide, please. Um, the Open Source Pharma Foundation is an Indian NGO that embodies the open source mentality and applies it to drug discovery and development uh, with the goal of delivering affordable treatments for TB and other neglected diseases. Next slide when you're ready. We are creating a data commons for tuberculosis with this partnership between OSPF, Ingentium, and Axiomedics. Axiomedics is loading existing data on TB and other relevant conditions into a Transmart instance on the cloud. Uh, and Gentium's tools allow us to stay on top of the latest information. Uh, combining this use of Transmart and of the Ingentium tools, uh, this partnership provides a key resource that will be made broadly available to the TB research community. It's going to be an, an open resource for researchers to take advantage of. Uh, next slide when you're ready. Transmart is the perfect choice for this project because of its user-friendly analytical tools, as well as its wide range of loadable data types. Um, our implementation is hosted on the cloud for our maximum shareability, considering this is going to be an open resource. Next. So we've begun by loading data from NIH's gene expression omnibus, which is all publicly available. Um, this table shows you an overview of our initial data sets on tuberculosis, although we're also including some studies for other neglected diseases and for certain drugs that OSPF is examining in conjunction with TB. Uh, next, yes, thank you. Uh, this is just a screenshot, uh, an example of a basic Transmart comparison in our current instance as it stands. Uh, I literally took the screenshot yesterday. <laughs> um, so this is just an example. We're comparing pulmonary TB versus sarcoidosis. We have a chi-squared and a t-test, which are two different types of analyses to compare populations. Next. So OSPF is also partnering with Ingentium, um, which is an AI and machine learning company focusing on extracting knowledge from new information sources and finding new relationships. Ingentium has worked with our TB subject experts to create a knowledge base and associated knowledge graph. Um, the knowledge basis cybernetic process is trained and extracts from 10 years of previous, previously published information and it learns rules. Um, this is part of being trained by our uh, the TB subject experts. So it ex extracts info on drugs, diseases, symptoms, et cetera, four times a day and updates the knowledge base accordingly. Um, so the knowledge base can be viewed in a few ways, the simplest being a table like this, where you can click on an entry and get more information on the article, including how it's been indexed for this knowledge base. You can also view the article directly. Rudy, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so if you click, it'll bring up a page like this. Um, you can view keywords if you click again, Rudy or you can view the article text itself if you click again. Thank you. Um, in the next slide, we have another way that you can view the knowledge base uh, and navigate it. So this is called a foam tree where each cell is a topic. Uh, the size of the cell indicates number of articles and if you click on a cell, it zooms into further subtopics. You can kind of see them faintly. And yeah, if you click in, then it, it shows you, it like zooms in on those extra subtopics. Uh, next. So for the knowledge graph, 
Um, natural language processing and predication are used to find the nodes, which are things like proteins, genes, drugs, symptoms, anatomy, stuff like that, um, all nouns, and then connects pairs of nodes with appropriate edges. So edges are verbs, like what node associates, regulates, or treats another node, something like that. Um, so layered on top of Ingentium scaffold, which is just a broad set of nodes and edges that have been created from key ontologies and data sources of known biology. Um, on top of the scaffold, their knowledge graph provides a focused overview of tuberculosis against the backdrop of biological knowledge. Next. So here's a simple representation of part of the knowledge graph. Um, it's easy to identify pathways and relationships between drugs, gene symptoms, et cetera, when you can see them real graphically, visually like this. Um, so the dots are the nodes, of course, and the lines are the edges. So if you go to the next slide, the same article that we pulled up before in that table view, um, this is viewing that article in knowledge graph form. So that dot in the center is our, is our article. Um, and here we can see various nodes that were extracted from the paper, as well as the re their relationships as described in the paper. So if you guys can see, you can kind of see that, you know, these different dots, we have stuff like cancer, diabetes, um, for certain proteins, and then all of those little arrows, we have um, relationships that have been pulled out by natural language processing. <clears throat> it's pretty cool. If we go on to the next slide, we just have a summary. Um, so the OSPF data commons will accelerate TB drug discovery and development by enabling clinical and translational research. The knowledge base, knowledge graph, and alerting platform focused on TB content supports clinicians and researchers by making quality information easily accessible and understandable. So Axiomedics really has this data commons part where we implement Transmart. And then Ingentium is bringing in the, this knowledge base, knowledge graph part, which is um, you know, bringing in all of these scientific papers and, uh, and other types of content like that. So combined, combining these two, we're really building a platform to propagate the concept of repurposing generic drugs using open source methodologies. <clears throat> and finally, I just have some acknowledgements. Um, we have the Axiomedics team, the Ingentium team, um, National Institute for Research in Tuberculosis, as well as the full OSPF team. <clears throat> any, do I take questions, Rudy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If there are any questions now um, on uh, Kendra stuff, you can raise your hand or post a question to the question panel or post something in the, um, in the chat window. And we're, we're I'm watching that, and uh, so far I don't see anything. Well, to be fair, I did talk about this back in June. <laughs> yeah. Well, not the Ingentium piece, though. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think um, that that's great. I think let's open it up now to questions about anything that we've covered today. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Kendra. Anyone have any questions, comments? Want to know more about to begin? I'd also I see a hand. There's one hand raised. Hubert Hickman, you, uh, unmute you. You want to ask your question? Go ahead. Uh, yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, here you find. Uh, yes, yes. I might just have a question about the uh, the knowledge graph for the tuberculosis work. How how big is that graph presently? It's just a, more of a matter of curiosity than than anything in particular. But how much how how big of a data set are we talking about, or how large is that graph? Yeah, it's I I think the tuberculosis specific um, components are in the hundred few hundred thousand nodes uh, and edges. Our scaffold itself, which spans, you know, all of biology is, is um, many millions, you know, 10 million nodes and I don't know, 20, 30 million edges. Um, but the, you know, the, the knowledge, the, the stuff that just comes from the tuberculosis papers is on the, you know, a few hundred thousand. Okay. Any idea? 
Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, there's a, is there a question in the question window? Is the beta test for Transmart 2019 available for download and install? Um, I don't think it's quite ready yet. We're, I know we're working on the, um, the script for downloading. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if Peter is on. No, I don't see him. Uh, I think we'll we'll have a separate announcement when the installation, the install scripts are, are actually available. I know that that was something that he was working on. I just want to make Good, does thanks. anybody have ideas for agenda items for this um, community call, if, um, topics that they would like to cover or or things you'd like us to, to reach out to folks and, and try to bring in? I think that that's, you know, just generally it's an open invitation that if you have ideas and thoughts or you want to you have to volunteer to contribute something, uh, we're always looking for uh, a subject or two to add to this agenda. And we'd be delighted to, to get uh, some broader participation. One of the suggestions is what about a landscape of the field of competing technologies or complementary technologies? A good idea. Can I um, mention one thing? Um, I, I don't think I'm going to be on the October call because I, I think I'm going to be on vacation. So um, in November, there's a, an AMIA meeting. Um, I know a number of you will be attending that. Um, I just want to uh, make a mention that there is a, a session um, that the foundation will we'll talk about ITB2. We'll talk about a number of different things. We'll talk about ITB2 and the foundation and uh, in terms of um, you know how to sustain a lot of these large projects, um, the topic of the the title of the, t the talk is something like 10 years of CTSA outputs and moving forward. So how you know how we succeeded um, and how we kept things going. And there'll be a number of different um, uh, it's, a, it's a panel and a number of different speakers talking about. Um, what happened over the past 10 years and how things su succeeded or not and how um, efforts that were made around sustainability so just a, a shout out about um, about that talk Uh, Stephen Wick suggests why not have uh, rotate through the working groups and uh, during these meetings and, and I think we, we actually try to do that when they have something um, that they're interested in presenting but um, you know maybe maybe a little bit more frequent uh, we should we should do that yeah, that's I'll, talk, I'll talk to Jim Clark he hasn't presented ontologies for a while and I know Mike Mendez is presenting um, some ETL um, Pretty neat ETL stuff in Tubingen, so he'll have materials that we can we can include as well. Also, just to keep you know ideas for new working groups as well, we're always you know that's part of that whole membership, um, kind of fostering that membership group. 
but any ideas around um, pulling people together to talk about a particular um, topic is, is, is also something that would be really of interest. Okay, let's see any other questions. There were a couple that came through the question window, which I've replied to um, also. So it looks like that's about it. Um, Dan, any closing remarks? Just um, have a have a great September. And um, for those of you that are coming to Tubingen, um, I'll see you in a few weeks. Okay. Thanks everyone for, for joining us.